Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell, and I cannot be more excited to continue sharing with you guys personal finance topics that I think could be useful for you in your long-term financial journey. Today, we are going to be talking about the Fed and specifically how the Fed's impact on interest rates can impact you and then can impact me, right? Because uh, I think so often we feel uh, disconnected from the decisions made by uh, the economic powers in this country. We feel disconnected uh, from the Fed, but uh, what the Fed does is very real and the impact that the Fed has may be just as big as any economic impact that can be had on you by uh, something outside of your own household. So stick around for a discussion of all that and more in today's episode. Before we get started though, if you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcasts, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. Then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions. And you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to this show on a day to day basis. Now, we've talked about what the Federal Reserve is on this show, so I'm not going to bore you with the details uh, of that again today. But I think that it's important uh, as we come up on uh, another Fed meeting uh, and potentially the, the decision for the Fed to increase interest rates um, for the first time in three years, I think it's uh, important for us to talk about the impact that an increase in interest rates can have. Because so, um, so commonly do we just forget. We forget the impact that things have. We forget um, how different economic policies or how different um, you know, historical narratives uh, end up playing out. And so I want us to remember uh, what it looks like, remember uh, what increased rates look like, talk about why uh, rates may increase in the first place. And then ultimately, um, I just really want to focus on us, right? As the consumer, as the individual investor, um, as the person that just operating in the United States economy, how is a change in interest rates going to affect uh, you and me. So let's just start uh, with some history of the Fed funds rate. And that is what the Federal Reserve, um, that is what they control. They control the federal funds rate. And that federal funds rate uh, is just nothing more than the rate that banks can lend to one another uh, overnight by. Now, um, ultimately, that ends up being uh, the baseline by which just about every other rate uh, is determined in our economy, right? Whether it's a rate on a loan um, or, you know, the uh, rate of uh, inflation being impacted by uh, the federal funds rate. All of the different rates that you can expect, the rate of return on your investments ultimately can be impacted by the Fed funds rate. Now, the Federal Reserve tends to keep the Fed funds rate within a 2 to 5% sweet spot uh, that helps maintain a healthy economy. Now, for a little uh, context, um, it's currently at zero, basically, zero to 0.25 range. And so it's effectively zero uh, right now. So it is below uh, what it typically is uh, at. And so to say, um, as some politicians may do, as some individuals may do, that we are just in the healthiest of economies may not be quite true, uh, simply due to the fact that they, there's no pressure from the Fed. There's no pressure uh, from interest rates. Not only uh, have interest rates remained low, but the Fed's continued uh, to buy bonds up until this month, um, which has been you know, an amazing stimulus to our economy as well. Now, the nation's benchmark rate has increased well above uh, that 2 to 5% range at times uh, to curb runaway inflation. And uh, if any of you guys are paying attention, you know uh, that one of the reasons, the primary reason why rates would be increasing now uh, is not just that our economy is stronger, but it's the fact that we are dealing with inflation that we haven't seen in 30 plus years, right? Uh, we're dealing with 7.5% year on year inflation, um, which is quite substantial and is well above uh, the target of 2% that the Fed is set with. And the Fed's job, right, uh, is to maximize employment and maintain stable prices. And maintaining stable prices has to do with 
inflation itself, right? Uh, so they're trying to keep inflation at bay and will likely uh, in their next meeting increase uh, the Fed funds rate just to try to do that, right? To try to keep uh, inflation at bay. Now, undoubtedly, they have plenty of headwinds. Undoubtedly, there are plenty of things uh, the Fed has working against them right now. Um, you know, not the least of which is geopolitical concerns in Russia and the Ukraine, um, but also things going on in the United States economy uh, that, you know, they're looking around like, well, should we really increase at, you know, this much? Or, you know, they, they've already kind of pulled back from the potential of increasing by half a percent only to uh, a quarter percent increase, but still, uh, an increase is an increase and it can end up having uh, some very real impacts on our lives. Okay. Now, the all time low uh, Fed funds rate is effectively zero, right? The Fed has twice lowered the rate to a range of zero to uh, 0.25%. The first time was during the financial crisis of 2018, and the Fed didn't resume raising interest rates uh, until December of 2015. So that just tells you the type of shambles that our economy was in, uh, where you know we have a financial crisis in 2008. Uh, and don't end up with an increase in rates for another seven years past that. Now, the second time that this was done was most recently uh, in March 2020 as a result uh, of the coronavirus pandemic. Um, and the Fed announced in June 2021 that it would keep rates in that range until 2023. And we're seeing now uh, that that is not likely to be the case. Um, you know, most recently, we're getting every indication uh, from Jay Powell and um, you know, every analyst that's out there that the Fed will increase interest rates by a quarter of percent now in 2022, not wait until 2023, simply due to the fact uh, that inflation um, is running a bit out of control at this point, right? Um, not only is one rate hike priced in uh, to the market at this point, but several for this year, right? Many are expecting four to five different rate hikes uh, this year by the Federal Reserve. Now, the lowest Fed funds rate uh, before 2008, uh, was in the range of 0.75 to 1% uh, in 2003 in a move to combat the 2001 recession. There were fears that the economy was drifting towards deflation uh, at that time. And deflation is when prices keep falling, convincing buyers to delay purchases as they wait uh, for still lower prices. So that doesn't necessarily um, you know, speak to economic growth um, in the way that inflation might, even though inflation... Um, is also a negative thing for us, a negative thing for the consumer, uh, simply due to the fact that we go to the grocery store, it costs more. We go, um, you know, try to buy a car, it costs more, all these different things. Now, the highest federal funds rate uh, was 20% uh, in 1980, which a Fed funds rate of 20% at this point might just tank our economy in a way we've never seen. But um, that was the highest Fed funds rate, and it was to combat double-digit inflation. Inflation began to skyrocket in March of 1973 when President Richard Nixon disengaged the dollar from the gold standard. Inflation increased from 4.7% to 12.3% in December 1974, uh, and the Fed increased the federal funds rate from 7% in March to 11% by August. Again, numbers that we can barely even fathom at this point. Inflation continued to remain in the double digits through April of 1975, and the Fed increased the benchmark rate to 16% in March of 1975, worsening the 1973 to 1975 recession. Because, of course, if you're increasing rates, it's going to just be more costly to borrow, um, and the you know movement of money throughout the economy will not be as swift. And then it reversed course dramatically and lowered the rate to 5.25% by April of 1975. They were all over the place, to say the least. And these sudden changes uh, were a part of a stop-go monetary policy, and they weren't sustained uh, enough to either end inflation or spur growth. Confused businesses kept prices high to stay ahead of the Fed's uh, interest rate spikes, which only made inflation worse. Fed leaders learned that managing inflation expectations was a critical factor in, con in controlling inflation itself. And that's something our own Fed uh, is trying to do today, right? They're trying to manage the expectations surrounding inflation, right? And manage the expectations of the public. They're not trying to come out and just increase interest rates by two, three, four, ten percent 10% at any one time uh, to try to put a stop to something or uh, you know decrease them very quickly to start something right? Um, they are doing things, one, as needed, it seems, and two, 
they're kind of doing things with a slower, uh, more calculated approach uh, than was done back in the 70s. Now, Federal Reserve Chair uh, Paul Volcker back in the 70s ended uh, the Fed's stop-go policy in 1979. Uh, he instead raised rates and kept them there to finally end inflation. And that created the 1980 recession, but it thoroughly ended the double-digit inflation, which has not been a threat since. And we're getting as close to it as we've ever been today. Now, the Fed began targeting the money supply to fight inflation in 1979. Uh, the Fed funds rate fluctuated a great deal between 79 and 82 as a result. Uh, then in 82, the Fed returned to targeting the Fed funds rate. The FOMC, the Federal Open Market Committee, um, it formally announced its policy changes for the first time in February 1994. Its announcements since then have made clear that it, what it wants interest rates to be. Uh, the policy manages expectations of inflation and minimizes disruptions caused by surprises from the Fed because surprises from the Fed are no good for consumers and no good for businesses. Now, what does this mean for you? I know that was some history, some information, some things that um, you may not have been too interested in, but how is the Fed going to impact you? Okay, now interest rates are almost undoubtedly going up this month for the first time in three years. Okay, so just get ready because it's happening unless something catastrophic occurs. Okay, uh, the Feds are expected to raise its benchmark interest rate by 0.25% uh, to begin curbing inflation, which is running at a 40-year high. Additional hikes are likely later this year. American households will feel that policy uh, in many ways, both positive and negative. Um, the Fed raising rates touches pretty much every single corner of the economy, and you know we haven't seen it much in our lifetime. But if you just remember a few short years ago uh, when the Fed was raising rates and the 10-year yield eclipsed 3% for the first time in a long time, uh, people get very antsy and they think that economic growth is just gonna you know halt. And that's probably not true, but we have uh, this very wary feeling about higher interest rates um, and it leads to some very staunch reactions by the market. Now, what are the impacts that the Fed changing policy, changing their interest rate? Uh, what is it going to do to you? Well, first and foremost, loans, okay? Higher interest rates translates to costlier financing for borrowers. Now, uh, if you watch this show, you know what? You know that uh, I am not somebody who is gonna sit here and tell you to go into debt uh, for really anything. The only thing that I'm really comfortable with you taking out debt for is a mortgage, uh, and then ultimately a mortgage um, is just not debt like your student loans, your auto loans, your credit cards, your margin loans on investment accounts, all these different types of things uh, that people take out uh, in order to try to, um, you know, pay less now, but, uh, you know, have the, the benefit that they want. All they're doing is mortgaging their future, quite honestly. Now, the higher rates go, uh, it's going to be harder and harder uh, to be a borrower, right? Um, we've seen uh, just most recently, right? Uh, housing prices have blown up for many reasons, but one particular is uh, that rates have been so low. And if you can um, very easily refinance, or if you can uh, take out a loan at a um, you know higher amount than uh, you would have been able to previously because of a lower rate, then you're going to do so, right? It's very easy to be a borrower. It's gonna inflate uh, that asset's price but that can quickly go away uh, and the demand for houses uh, in the way that it has been may go away as well. Now let's say a consumer wants to buy a $500,000 home. They get a $400,000 mortgage at a 30 year fixed rate. They would pay about $80,000 more over the loan's term and about $200 more each month with a 4% mortgage rate relative to a 3%. So just that 1% difference in rate on a mortgage uh, can have quite the substantial effect. Now, income qualifications and down payments increase with mortgage rates as well, meaning new home buyers may want to speed up their search so they don't get priced out of the market. Now, uh, that may be the case, but uh, we also don't want to make bad decisions, especially bad decisions on borrowing money um, just based on what economic indicators are doing or what the Fed funds rate is doing. Uh, you want to do smart things that um, are conducive to you winning financially over a long period of time. Now, consumers may be shopping for a new car, um, and these car loans are going to have higher rates uh, as we move forward. Now, hopefully none of you out there are taking out car loans, but even if you are, uh, you're going to see the cost of operating that vehicle increase. Now, borrowers with variable interest rates 
um, on any type of loans may want to weigh, you know, refinancing to a fixed rate now because uh, as you know rates rise, if you have a variable rate loan of any type, uh, then you're going to end up with higher payments, no doubt. But what we do know is that rushing to save money by buying like a house could result in you ending up being in uh, financial hardship, which could be more expensive uh, than just a slight increase in interest rates over the long run. So on the positive side, higher mortgage rates may cool off a hot housing market and bring home prices back down to earth. So that is one impact, right? Loans, uh, the cost of housing, all these types of things uh, can be impacted in a very real way. Now, the second impact that it can have on you is your investments, okay? Higher interest rates will likely pressure growth stocks. And why specifically growth stocks? Well, let's think about this for a second. Growth stocks are going to be stocks that don't have uh, very stable cash flows. Uh, they don't have uh, as predictable earnings. Um, these are stocks that uh, are based very heavily on expectation. A lot are based um, very heavily on uh, the ability of the consumer uh, to be willing to consume, right? Uh, and that is done far more in a low interest rate environment, a high economic growth environment than when interest rates are higher. So growth stocks uh, can take a hit and they have already taken a hit. and We haven't even seen uh, this increase in rates just yet. Now, such stock uh, is issued by companies that have the potential to grow at an above average rate relative to the broader market. These firms uh, thrive when interest rates are low because they can invest in innovative projects more cheaply. Uh, it could be a rough road ahead for these types of stocks. Now, investors may inadvertently uh, be overweight in growth stocks due to big returns in that portion of their portfolio, which uh, we did see. Now, a lot of air has come out of the growth portion of many people's portfolios, but um, that still tends to be a very large allocation for a lot of people. Now, they should allocate more money to value stocks in the easiest way uh, being the purchase of value-focused mutual fund or ETFs, exchange-traded funds. Uh, now, bonds will also likely lose money in the short term, right? Uh, because if you're buying bonds with any intention to sell over time, um, then what you're... Because let, let me just explain this for a second. When you buy a bond, if you're going to hold it to maturity, uh, a, you know, a straight fixed rate bond, uh, you are going to get whatever the return is, whatever the yield is on that bond, if you hold it to maturity, just period. Regardless of what the price does in the short term, you are going to get that return, okay? Now, uh, if you were to ever sell that bond, right, or if you're holding like a bond ETF, bond mutual fund, whatever, uh, and they're constantly turning over the bonds within uh, the fund, well, you may see prices drop when interest rates rise, right? That is the relationship between um, the price of a bond and interest rates. As interest rates rise, prices drop. As interest rates drop, prices rise. Uh, and that's simply due to the fact uh, that when interest rates are higher, right, um, you are going to have some higher return expectation. And that return expectation uh, comes from two places, right? You get some uh, fixed coupon that you get paid, some fixed payment from a bond. And then the other return is the change in price between what you pay uh, and the face value of the bond. And so clearly, right, as a price gets lower, uh, that means you will make more over time on the change in price. But as the price gets higher, you'll make less, right? Therefore, lower interest rates, higher prices, higher interest rates, lower prices, right? Uh, so that's how it may impact the bond allocations in your portfolio. Now, this dynamic is more pronounced for bond funds with a long duration, right? Those with bonds maturing in 10 years versus one year, because uh, longer duration bonds are going to have more volatility associated with them because they have more time until they actually mature. So if you have to pay for college or buy a house in a year, you shouldn't be thinking, I can't lose money in my bonds because you very well could as rates rise. However, in the long term, higher interest rates ultimately mean higher returns for bond investors. Uh, new bonds are issued at higher yields that correspond um, to prevailing interest rates. So ultimately, yes, as yields rise, the price of bonds may fall, but um, this is going to open up new opportunities for bond investors uh, as yields rise over time. So your investments can take a hit. Your investments can uh, be impacted by higher rates set by the Fed. Now, also, your savings account uh, can be impacted by the Fed's uh, you know, setting of the Fed funds rate. Now, the national average interest rate uh, for savings accounts is a very paltry 0.06%, according to a March 2nd poll conducted by Bankrate. 0.06%. That's 
basically zero, okay? Uh, but consumers will likely see higher bank account interest if the Federal Reserve acts. Online banks offering high yield accounts tend to pay higher rates than traditional banks, um, and these rates can rise. Now, I'll just tell you, uh, my online savings account um, pays like half a percent per year right now, uh, and that's about as high as you are going to see it currently, right? But that is likely to rise um, as interest rates rise. Now, it's important to do some rate shopping uh, if you're trying to enjoy the gains of your savings account, but just remember that your savings account is there for a specific purpose, right? It's there for a specific something that you're saving up to buy, or uh, it's there for emergency uses. Either way, we're not too worried about the growth of our savings account, even though uh, it can be impacted. Now, the gains likely won't be immediate uh, as rates rise. It generally takes several months uh, to a year for banks to raise rates on savings accounts once uh, the Federal Reserve has uh, enacted a higher rate policy, okay? So savings accounts can be impacted as well. Now, let's get down to the thing uh, that's on everybody's mind, which is inflation, okay? The reason that the central bank is raising interest rates is to cool the economy to tame inflation. If the policy has its desired effect, consumers should see recent rapid price increases for food, clothing, and other goods and services to begin to moderate, right? Um, if you just look at the price of gasoline, and let's be clear, the price of gasoline is not um, just directly tied to uh, inflationary pressures, but um, it has increased due to many different factors, right? Uh, but several states have seen uh, the average for a gallon of regular gas increased by uh, 30, 40, uh, 50 cents over uh, the past several months. Now, this knock-on effect stems from higher borrowing costs. Uh, costlier financing translates to less investment from consumers and businesses, which cools demand in an economy and tames prices. And this is a really counterintuitive thing and something that we need to think through um, and just be thoughtful of because wouldn't you want an economy to be growing quickly. Of course, right? That, that seems logical. But if an economy grows too quickly, if it gets too far out of hand in our fiat money system, right, where, you know, our money is just based on, um, you know, the willingness of a consumer to pay a particular price for something, right? Prices are based on demand and there is no backing for the dollar. There is no gold standard. Uh, the only backing for the dollar is the full faith and credit of the United States government. Um, when that is the case, then as economies grow quickly, then prices rise quickly uh, and you end up with very high inflation, which hurts consumers um, and will ultimately make an economy uh, you know, grind to a halt eventually. Now, what you like to see is economic growth uh, with you know, sustainable inflation. And right now we don't tend to have and right now we don't seem to have sustainable inflation. Inflation is far too high to continue this way. Uh, over long periods of time, right? But the Fed has to walk the line between uh, increasing uh, their base rate and then ultimately, you know, just halting the economy, right? They have to do so uh, with the expectations of the market and do so in a way that will actually have an impact uh, while still not spooking investors off. But ultimately, um, inflation is something uh, that you should see moderate, that you should see slow, uh, as the Fed continues to raise rates. Now, uh, the question is, is it going to be uh, too little too late? Uh, are they going to act as brazenly as they should? Um, and then the question is, how brazenly should they act in the first place? And that uh, is a question that is above many of our pay grades. Now, the final way uh, that I want to give you that uh, the Fed's higher interest rates may impact you is via jobs and wages, okay? Um, lower demand may impact jobs and wages in certain parts of the economy. A high demand for workers and a limited supply of labor uh, have led to record job openings uh, and fast wage growth in recent months. Um, people have gotten used to it being this first worker-friendly hiring climate in a while, and that dynamic may shift with higher interest rates because quite clearly, uh, you know, I was talking about growth companies, you know, as growth companies see these higher interest rates, then um, they're not going to be able to borrow money as easily, raise money as easily. So they're not going to uh, be so swift to hire large swaths of people. Um, not only is that the case, just about uh, any company that um, could add to their workforce, could expand, is likely not going to be expanding in the same way 
uh, that they would be in a lower interest rate environment. So the way that you've seen wages rise, the way that you've seen uh, the job market be open to uh, all types of people and um, you know just anyone who really wants to work can get a job, then it's not necessarily going to be that way moving forward if the Fed is very aggressive uh, in its raising of rates. Now, I don't want to freak you out with any of this. I don't want to make you go jump off a cliff or sell all your investments or whatever because you shouldn't. Right? You shouldn't make large changes to your life based on what the Federal Reserve may or may not do. Even though there are all these expectations, the Fed has been known to deviate from time to time. Um, the Fed is a very heavy driving force, uh, but ultimately, it should not run your life. Right, In the same way that I've told you many times uh, that the biggest the biggest impact on your financial life has had uh, within your own decision making, within your own household, uh, within your own habits. Um, the Fed can only do so much. Uh, the Fed is not going to keep you from being able to pay off debt. The Fed is not going to keep you uh, from being able to get a job. The Fed is not going to keep you uh, from making money in your investments or putting money in your investments. The Fed is not going to keep you from doing any of those things, right? Um, now, May inflation run too hot for too long and you have less money after um, you, know, you pay for everything out of your paycheck? Maybe so, right? Um, but this is not going to last forever. It, it does not, it will not, it cannot. Um, and ultimately, uh, you are going to have far more of an impact on your financial life over a long period of time than the Fed ever will. Now, it may be very easy uh, to blame someone else for the issues or blame um, the Federal Reserve for the decisions that they make. Uh, but let's also be clear that the Federal Reserve, uh, I mean, ultimately, are they just trying to do what's best for the economy? I mean, it, their driving forces have uh, very often been questioned. Uh, but the good news is, is you have no control over it. You only have control over you and your own financial decisions, right? Uh, so if anything, you know, higher interest rates are going to deter you from borrowing money. And I like that. And you should like that, too. You shouldn't want to be borrowing um, just boatloads of money. Higher interest rates uh, are going to make it to where we're going to have a, a more um, common investment environment than we've had uh, in the recent past where growth stocks just blow up and then uh, tank. That's not what the investment landscape has been over the last 50 to 100 years. Uh, then savings accounts may actually get uh, to a reasonable rate that we've seen um, in the past. And then we may see inflation, but maybe inflation uh, that is far less pungent uh, as it has been recently. And then, like I said, getting jobs and seeing increased wages may not be um, happening as quickly as it has happened over the past year or so. Uh, but all this to say, uh, a quarter percent rate is not going to change the world, um, but a quarter percent rate may be well on its way uh, to being, you know, two, three, four percent uh, as we see inflation continuing to rise uh, here in the United States. So hopefully this helps you to understand uh, the Fed, the Fed funds rate, why they raise interest rates and the impacts it can have on you uh, and your life, because that's what I want for you. I want you to understand the impacts that higher level uh, decisions are going to have on you uh, and what you can do about them. And what you should do about the Fed and the Fed funds rate is not much. OK, uh, but you should understand it. You should understand uh, what is impacting uh, some of the economic things that you are seeing. Uh, that way you can be more informed, more informed uh, in the ballot box, more informed uh, when you you know go and try to make a, a Facebook post about inflation. Right. Uh, this way you will understand a little better. And know what is driving some of these impacts in your life. So thanks for watching this video. If you could go down below, hit the big red subscribe button, like this video, leave me any feedback in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to respond to anything you leave down there. If you're listening on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave me a review on either one of those platforms. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. And that's really good supplemental materials to all the things I'm putting out in these long form episodes on YouTube and the podcast every single day. Then if you need somebody to help you to build a financial plan and keep you accountable to that plan over the long term, then I can do that. Just DM me on any of the major social media sites and tell me that you are interested in financial coaching sessions and you and I can begin working together, pushing towards your long-term financial goals and ultimately pushing you on towards long-term financial freedom, which is what I hope for every single individual who's watching or listening to this show on a day-to-day -day basis. So thanks for tuning into this episode of Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. God bless.